uh, we'll begin with my friend Manish Parikh from Colombia, um, who was a, a leading enroller in the United States in the bionics experience. Thank you. Well, thanks, David. And again, I want to thank Bednall, the Richters, and of course, uh, uh, my boss and partner, Marty Leon, who allowed me to be uh, the PI at Columbia for this great uh, trial. And the question really is, and I learned quite a bit uh, preparing for this, are durable polymers really durable? I have no financial disclosures with respect to this presentation. So let's take a poll. Is it durable? These are two electron micrographs uh, taken for commercially available DES that were uh, expanded at nominal pressures and immersed in plasma for 50 days. Uh, and just to, as a reference, the gray is polymer, the white is metal. And can you, dis, can you tell which stent is coated with a durable polym polymer versus which stent is a biodegradable polymer? Any ideas? So. Durable or not, raise your hands, durable. Okay. Durable or not, raise your hands, durable. Okay. A lot of indecisiveness. So what we would have thought as durable is actually biodegradable to your left, and what we would have thought is uh, uh, durable is the, the durable polymer on the right. And look at the difference. And yes. what we're really seeing is that these terminology of durable and biodegradable are really just marketing terms with respect to how these products are manufactured. So the dichotomous assignment of durable or degradable is insufficient to really describe the reality of these materials. Drug looting stents as a construct are complex and are likely represent an entire spectrum of durability reflecting the material, the manufacturing process as Yoram beautifully demonstrated, the specific application, the life cycle of the product and the drug, and the interaction with the biology. And really, the degradation of drug looting stents, which most interventionalists think is just simple hydrolysis of the polymer, is quite uh, uh, oversimplified. There's actually three very important factors that play into the degradation. Mechanical factors, chemical and drug elution factors, and also biological factors. Now, interestingly, just taking a drug looting stent out of the package after it's being crimped uh, can and does have impact on what it looks like. Also, we beat these stents up through calcium, tortuous vessels, tracking, and expansion itself also has tremendous effect on mechanical degradation. These are some very beautiful SEMs that Yoram provided. This particular stent comes right out of the package, crimped. This is a Promis Premier, okay? You could already see before it's actually even implanted, there's degradation. You see white metal and flaking. Here on the left, this is a Zions stent, okay, with webbing and cracking. This is actually the Orsiro product here in the middle. And to the right, our friend Synergy stent with large cracks and peeling uh, and exposure of the underlying metal after expansion. So what we really think as whether it's durable bio or bioresorbable, we really actually have a significant amount of damage and frailty in these products with mechanical degradation. In addition, the chemical and elution process also has tremendous amount of degradation. Some of them are pre-programmed, some of them are not. The drug elution actually affects the stability of the entire matrix. Here, this is a Promis Premier again. This is the Resolute with the pocketing and in uh, homogeneous mixing. And this is actually a Synergy platform uh, after expansion. Looking at, look at the immense amount of peeling, cracking, um, sort of these are craters in the middle of this Resolute stent. This is actually chipping at the end of this and exposure of the metal underneath. So you could kind of get a feel. If you don't have polymer and drug there, you're not impacting how the, pe the vessel heals including there's biological degradation, which is very difficult to image directly, but involves inflammation. It's affected both by the mechanical and the chemical degradation process, and is also affected by the presence or absence of drug. So this is the bionier linear uh, drug eluting stent. The design assumption is the extreme end of non-degrading spectrum may offer clinical advantages with reduction in inflammation, and improvement in endothelialization. It's a novel elastomeric polymer, which reduces damage due to crimping, 
tracking, and expansion. And again, as Yoram pointed out, there's a unique manufacturing process which promotes the uniformity, adhesion, and surface quality, and nearly eliminates degradation due to chemical and elution. So this is the elastomeric polymer, um, almost no degradation with crimping or, or expansion. Again, as he suggested, not perfect, but very, very different than some of the electron micrographs that I showed of the current commercially available products. So here's a case from our lab, uh, one of uh, about 25 plus patients enrolled. It's a 65 year old male. I've been taking care of this guy for about 14 years. This guy had a cipher put in his LED 10 years after his cipher LED was put in. He thrombosed his LED and had an anterior wall myocardial infarction. He also subsequently had progression of disease in his right coronary. This is actually looks like a benign mid-right. Actually, with you FFR, it's significant. There's a, uh, a cipher in this RPL with some moderate uh, neointima, which was negative when we FFR'd it. It's a dominant right coronary. And here, we put a six French guide in, a wire. Everything was pre-procedure IVUS with a plaque burden of 81 and an MLA of 33.1 in an FFR positive vessel. We pre-dilated with a 3515 and then subsequently implanted a, a 3528 Bionier at 14 atmospheres and expanded it to with a 4015 uh, NC balloon at high pressures. And this was the final result. Ho-hum, everyday PCI. And everything was imaged, both pre and post. This is the final result. Excellent expansion, MLA of 10.4, no edge dissections. This is the 13-month angiographic follow-up, which I just did. Again, looks pristine. If anything, there was progression of the RPL. But most importantly, I'll show you the IVUS. And I didn't show you the pre because I didn't want to waste your time. But I'm going to show you the IVUS of the 13-month. Of the Ladies and gentlemen, if I showed you the pre-IVUS, you would not be able to tell it was pre or 13-month absolutely pristine, okay? Uh, and I have to tell you that we don't see this very often in current clinical practice. Very, very impressive. I'm not gonna bore you, but this is a long run because we did a long run of the entire s segment as was mandated, but very, very nice result. And it's quite large and has maintained its uh, 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 patency. So in conclusion, polymers have been labeled as durable or non-durable, which is likely an unrealistic oversimplification. The degradation process creates intermediate forms, such as cracking, peeling, flaking, which we've seen, and particulates that may, pro may be pro-inflammatory, <coughs> thrombogenic, or detrimental in other ways. The ability to improve upon DES design and impact clinical outcomes is ultimately the goal with the Bioneer Stent platform the combination of the novel elastomeric polymer together with a unique quality uniformity manufacturing process creates a real scenario for a truly durable polymer which may offer advantages for patients in the long term. It is our mandate to continue to push this field forward and to have better products for our patients. Thank you very much.